everyone, today I wanted to show you a new tool included in After Effects CC 2015 called Character Animator. Now, I've always wanted to do character animation in the past, but have been scared away by its complexity. You know, like syncing a mouth up to audio or trying to get keyframes to look smooth and fluid instead of robotic. So what's great about Character Animator is it allows me to set up a character in Photoshop or Illustrator, then record a natural feeling performance with a webcam, and bring it all into After Effects to composite a full scene. I've been playing around with it for the past few months, and here are 10 tips that I've learned for getting started making your own animated characters. Start with another puppet as your template. Character Animator looks for certain trigger words in your file layer names. So if you call something left pupil or right pupil, it'll move with your own pupils when you hook it up to a webcam. If you start a puppet from scratch, you'll end up taking a lot of time at the end just reorganizing and renaming all your elements to fit the Character Animator naming conventions. And if one thing isn't right, you can run into frustrating results. What I do is look for an example character that's close enough in structure to the character that I want to make, and then start building my character against it. It'll save you a lot of headaches at the end. Check out the description in this video for a link to some characters I've created. You can feel free to edit and modify on your own. There are 13 different possible mouth layers. Three of these, neutral, smile, and surprised, are triggered by your mouth motions in the webcam. The other 10 are triggered by audio, looking for specific sounds like ooh or ah. So don't worry about over-exaggerating your mouth shape while talking because it doesn't matter. Just talk naturally. And use that knowledge to your advantage. So if my character is happy, I'll smile when I talk so they'll be smiling when I finish. Use keyboard command triggers. If you put a letter in parentheses after a layer name, it will show up when you tap the key during recording in Character Animator. For example, I've got some angry, downward slanting eyebrows triggered to the A key for this red monster. So when I hold down A, the monster gets angry. You can do this for anything, everything from different hand gestures to even a complete head turn. Basically, the more triggers you add, the richer your character is and the more dynamic and expressive your performance can be. Use eyelids for expressiveness. The eyes are the most expressive features of a face, so it only makes sense that you use all the eye-related items at your disposal in Character Animator. Here you have the option of upper and lower eyelids, which really help, particularly if your character has big cartoony eyes. It may feel subtle, but it really helps bring a character to life. Add dangle for anything that physics affects. If you add the word dangle in a layer name and set things up correctly, you'll create independent elements that will move on their own based on how the rest of you moves. So for this snow person character, her scarf will sway around. You can create an anchor point by creating a layer, making one dot, and renaming an origin, meaning the scarf will sway from that origin point. Adding several elements like this really helps a character come alive. Use fixed points to pin a character to a certain place. If you add the word fixed in your layer name, you can pin certain parts down. If I didn't have any fixed layers on Red Monster, his whole body would move while I move my head. But if I make his feet fixed, those won't move, but everything else will bend and morph to stay connected to them. If you have a more standard human character, you might want to keep their body fixed and let their head and neck bend around. Add mouse track left or right to add interactive elements. By adding mouse track left or mouse track right to a layer name, you can also add some limited mouse interactions for characters. The easiest example of this would be adding interaction points to hands, so when you drag near them, the arms move. So instead of your character's hands staying at their side the entire time, now you can add a little motion to add some more realism to the scene. Nutcracker jaw and adding behaviors. There's a section in your puppet options called behaviors, and you can add a few extra interactions here if you want. One of these is the nutcracker jaw, which basically is a different way to animate the mouth. So this bird character's beak might not need all 13 different mouth positions. Instead, I can just name the lower beak layer jaw, add the nutcracker jaw behavior, adjust the chin flappiness, and only the jaw layer will move up and down when I talk. It's a pretty cool effect. Include motion track points to add extras in After Effects. Just because Character Animator lets you animate a full character doesn't mean you have to. If I wanted more control over this snow person's arms, I could just make a small dot where the arms would go, record my performance, and then use the motion tracking tool in After Effects to attach an arm to it. You can even just record a mouth performance and attach it to something else in After Effects. Not just for characters. Now that you've got a great way to capture natural motion, think about how you could use it in other places. For a tree swaying in the wind or a balloon floating in the sky, sure, you could keyframe it out, but it may be a little faster and easier to do the performance capture and character animator instead. Anytime you think moving your head around would be easier than animating manually, it's worth a try. 
So that's a quick intro to what's possible with Character Animator. It's a great new tool to add to your After Effects arsenal, it makes character animation a lot of fun. Again, feel free to check out the link in the video description below for some puppets you can use to get started, or ask questions in the comments below. Good luck, and thanks for watching.